and welcome to this week's preview show where Neil Perrett is alongside me for the next 15 minutes or so. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that defeat at Sheffield United two weeks ago. We'll also be joined by Cherry's fullback Jack Stacey. And finally, we'll look ahead to tomorrow's game against Burnley at Turf Moor. Well, let's rewind the clock two weeks back and that game at Bramall Lane. Neil, it was a, a good start, but ultimately not quite enough in the end. I know, it was um, the, the Storm, Storm Chiara weekend, wasn't it? And um, the Manchester City game against West Ham was postponed and I think everybody was wondering whether our game was going to go ahead. Uh, and it did and it was monsoon conditions there in, in Sheffield, like you said. But, you know, we took the lead and conceded at the worst time in both halves, obviously on the stroke of half time, and then, you know, five minutes from time, six minutes from time, doesn't leave you too long to get an equaliser. And as for Callum Wilson, that's, I think, two starts in his last, two goals in his last three starts, you know, his, his finding form again, which is just what the lads need for the run-in. Absolutely. I mean, 100%, you know, he's, um, he, he's, he's been our leading, leading goal scorer um, for the past couple of seasons. Him and, him and Joshua King, of course, have chipped in lots of goals, very important goals, crucial goals as well. Um, and that's what we're going to need for the final 12 games of the season. And it's great to see him with a couple of goals in his last three games. And obviously, Joshua King and, and Jack Stacey back in the matchday squad as well. That can, again, only add a boost from, from here on in. Yeah, I mean, when you you know you look at the squad now compared to to six weeks ago, you know we needed bodies six weeks ago, and they you know they weren't there, and the, the treatment room was full up. But now it's emptying quite quickly, which is great. Options for the manager, options in the starting lineup, options on the bench. You know, you can look around if he needs to change a game. Um, you know, so it's certainly a lot more encouraging than it was six weeks ago. One player who didn't feature at Bramall Lane was Jefferson Lamb, obviously serving that suspension. How much of a, a miss do you think he is and how much of a crucial part is he to this squad? Yeah, I mean, it's a, like I've said, I've said it before, it's a really curious booking situation, the whole disciplinary situation. He, he, he gets that booking um, against Aston Villa and he's all of a sudden he's suspended for two games, but then he isn't because he gets another booking and he gets sent off. So he's still walking that uh, that disciplinary tight, right? We all know that if he gets another booking, it will be an automatic two-match ban, but he's an absolutely vital cog in the central midfield position. He's been superb since he came in, a fantastic signing. Um, and we're going to need him throughout the running, no question. Certainly very influential and, you know, going to Bramall Lane without him, it's a tough place to go. They've only lost two of their last nine games there. So, you know, it was a, a big task as it was and, and without someone like that, it can make all the difference, can't it? Yeah, of course it can. I mean, you know, you need, you need, your, you need your best players f fit and available and free of suspension. Of course you do, but, you know, he's had a few bookings. We all know that. Um, but... You know, he, he's one of the guys who sort of takes a booking for the team. You know, he's, there's been some important bookings, if you can call it that, you know, stopping players running through free on goal and stuff like that. So, um, you know, he's an enforcer in that central midfield. Um, it's, it's not something um, of his like that we've had probably you, you before, you know, you go back. You'd be looking, talking about people like Tony Poulis and people like that in the old days and uh, Harry Arter to an extent. But, you know, Jefferson, I think, has sort of taken it on, you know, two or three levels if you like. Absolutely. Well, after that game against Sheffield United, we had the winter break and Diego Rico and Jefferson Lerma were out in the community doing some brilliant work. Let's take a look. Well, some brilliant work over the winter break there. Now, as you can see, we have been joined by Cherry's defender, Jack Stacey. Jack, thank you for joining us. We have to start with how you're doing. You've recently had an injury. You've had a, a, a setback there, but back in, involved in the squad now. How are you feeling physically? Yeah, I mean, I've had you know two good weeks of training now. I was, I was back on the bench for Sheffield United, so I feel ready to go and, and hopefully to help the team towards the last um, 12 games of the season. And for you, what was what was it like? You know, when you picked up your injury, you worked your way into the team, playing really well, and then you know your hamstring goes and and it's back to recovery. Yeah, I think that's just football. You know, I, I, I was got I was in the team at the time, and then 
just running back felt some of my hamstring didn't think much of it and ended up being six weeks out but like I said that's part of football and I've just been working to get back to the level that I was at and we had a glut of injuries while you were sort of playing and now all of a sudden everybody's back as well so now you've got that extra challenge of trying to force your way back in yeah I mean I don't think the the Christmas schedule really helped in terms of injuries I think it was it wasn't just us it was a, across the whole Premier League but like you said now it, it's, it can only be a good thing for the whole team that there's such good competition um, for all places and hopefully that pushes on the players that are playing to, to have to produce their best. And how have you found the step up since coming in from Luton? Yeah, obviously it is a, is a massive step up. I think just the more you play and the more you train around you know, Premier League players, you, you do get used to it and you feel yourself improving and, and that's just what I, was, what I was aiming to do. And for you, how much has Eddie Howe taught you and how much of an influence has he had since you've come in? Yeah, like massive really. I think even from the start, you know, the way he reviews just training sessions, let alone matches, um, to, to on areas I can improve and then he would take me after our training session. We, we still do it and stuff, you know, they call it 1% one, 1 stuff to work on and which can really help you when you go into games, you feel like you're ready and you know the way that the team play. And in terms of the fullbacks, we've got some quite experienced fullbacks here. We've seen Simon Francis at fullback in recent weeks. We've also got Charlie Daniels. Can you learn a lot from them and, you know, their Premier League experience that they've had? Yeah, of course. I mean, they've had really good careers and that's something that I want to hopefully go on and emulate. So it's just the way, you know, it's not always going to them to ask for advice. It's just you can see the way they, they handle themselves and look after their bodies. And, and obviously the performances they put in, um, that's what you want to learn from. Just to ask you about Sheffield United, you had an interesting sort of 24 hours after the game. You were pencilled into playing the Premier League Cup. Just tell us what happened. Yes, yeah, so I, I went across from Sheffield United to, to a hotel in Stoke. Um, I was going to meet the under 23s there. And obviously Storm Chiara um, sort of disrupted their plans. So they then travelled up on the day. So me and Gav were waiting in a hotel in Stoke to meet them. I had a little nap before the game, which is my usual routine. Um, woke up opened the curtains and there was just snow everywhere. Get a call, the under 23s, they, they've turned around, game's off. So then it took me and Gav about another three or four hours to be able to, to make our way home. So yeah, that was, um, that was a long day, that one. We ended up getting back here like past 11 um, while all the other lads were in Dubai, which was nice. <laughs> um, obviously they, they deserved their rest and I needed to get minutes and hopefully I can get minutes coming up. You've got some fond memories of the Premier League Cup, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it might have been the first year um, when I was at Reading, we ended up winning winning um, over two legs against Man City in the final and I actually scored the winner. So, yeah, it was, it was good times. And just in terms of that winter break, you know, obviously after the Stoke game, you say some of the lads went to Dubai after Sheffield United. How much of a, a boost has it given everyone? Has it helped? Obviously, we've seen it new in this season. Has it, has it given everyone a boost? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've come back in. We were back in on Saturday and training just felt, you know, really, really sharp. And this week's been the same. So... I think it has, has been a little boost, but obviously um, every team's got the same, so we just have to use it to our advantage. And just finally, I want to ask you about Burnley on the weekend. What's the, the mood in the camp like and how are the lads feeling ahead of that one? Yeah, like I said, we've had a little bit longer to prepare because of the winter break. So um, we've done a little, you know, we've done all our analysis and we were working from Saturday on them. Obviously, they're in really good form, but this is the times that we have to start picking up points. So we're confident we can go there and do that. Well, Jack, thank you for joining us and I'm sure we all wish you the best of luck on the weekend. Now then, that game against Turf Moor is where our attention turns to next. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. We should have had more points if I look back at the games that we haven't got wins in. Um, there's several that spring to mind that I think are ah, frustrated that we didn't do better or, or come out with points. Yeah, trying to score goals is, of course, everything that we, we try to do. We try to score and entertain and attack and take the game to the opposition. But there's two, there's two phases to the game. You've got to defend well and we haven't kept enough clean sheets. We haven't been hard enough to score against. Um, but as I say, we're always learning and, and trying to take the, uh, the positives from the games and trying to take the learning things that we need to improve. I think if you look at the last three games overall, I think you've seen an upturn in performance. So I think that's um, important that the momentum shift is there in terms of the level of which we played at. So Brighton was very good for 60 minutes, the second 60 minutes of the game. Aston Villa was good, I felt, for the entire game and Sheffield United for the first half was very strong. So um, hopefully momentum has changed in terms of our level of performance. And I think if we hit those markers, then I think we've got a good chance of winning any game. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking this morning in his pre-match press conference. Neil, he and the rest of the squad will very much be looking to right the wrongs from December, won't they? 
Well, definitely. I mean, um, you know, we, we all watched that game. Um, we lost right at the end. It was a it was a poor game. Let's you know, both sides. Even Sean Dyche admitted that although that Burnley won, they hadn't played very well. I think we could all see that with our own eyes. Um, but it wasn't long ago. It'll be fresh in the memory. So certainly we'll be going to Turf Moor looking to um, get the three points. And Burnley, they have a very distinct way of playing. You know, we all know how they're they're going to set up, what they're going to try and do. But they're they're still very difficult to play against. Very difficult. I mean, you know, when you turn the clock back, maybe four or five games they looking like they were going to get sucked into the to the relegation battle and then all of a sudden they beat Leicester and Manchester United back to back winning at Old Trafford um, they followed that up with a with a draw against Arsenal in the Premier League and then they won at Southampton on Saturday with quite a bizarre opening goal that uh, uh, went in at the near post from a corner so very difficult yes they have their critics but you know, let's be fair, the teams in the bottom five or six would probably swap places with them in the table now. Absolutely. And in terms of their players, obviously, you mentioned that game at Southampton. Chris Wood went off with an injury and it looks like that it looks likely that he'll miss out on the weekend. And for them, you know, that's a, a massive loss ahead of the game. Yeah, I mean, he's a key factor in the, in the way that they play. I mean, um, I think we saw here just before Christmas, you know, every time the goalkeeper got the ball, he could sort of launched it as far as he could towards Chris Wood and... You know, players were working off Chris Wood and, you know, it's a very effective way of playing. Uh, might not be easy on the eye, but like I said, you know, it's effective um, play to their strengths. So he's certainly going to be a big, a big loss for them, but they've got a number of good players who can cause problems. And Chris Wood goes off, Vidra comes on, goes on to score the winning goal and, and quite the goal as well. So, you know, it, they've got players, as you say, you know, that can come on and, and make an impact. Well, that, exactly, and that you know that poses opposition teams different problems. All of a sudden, you're sort of geared up to, you know, face Burnley. How you know how they play, and then all of a sudden, you know, their their main six foot four, six foot five striker is injured, and all of a sudden, you've got someone of a, a completely different build coming on. Um, that poses different problems because you've got to you know deal with that in another way. In terms of our team and our injury news, as you mentioned earlier, you know the treatment room is looking a lot less busy than it did around Christmas. Obviously, Jefferson Lamb is going to be back from his suspension, so things are looking a bit more positive, aren't they? Obviously, having had the winter break as well, with with a little rest in there. Yeah, um, hopefully that will you know play to our advantage. We've you know we've had we've had a, had a good break. The manager will have got some good training into the players. Um, the injured players who are back now will have got another couple of weeks under their belt of fitness. That's absolutely key for any professional athlete. Um, options now, all of a sudden, it's not something we were talking about six weeks ago. I'm not saying the team was picking itself, but certainly a number of positions were. But, you know, that's not the case now. And all of a sudden, the manager's got some options. And just finally, give us your score prediction. I think it's going to be a 1-0 win to us. 1-0 win to us. There we go. Now, if you are heading up to Burnley, do have a safe journey. If not, make sure you listen to Chris Temple and John Williams on BBC Radio Solent and AFCB TV for the latest updates. Bye for now.